Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. Back on the set after uh, doing lots of traveling uh, through all of January, um, and then uh, a little bit of f no, not really doing tra tra traveling. Well, uh, yeah, a little bit of February too. Um, so you know the the symposium, the cocktail conference. Um, you know, interviewing some uh, wineries and all that good stuff. So back on the set for a couple episodes. Um, while you're watching this one, I'm actually uh, having a great time out in Germany. Uh, I'm at Provine. I'm also uh, have three appointments at three different wineries, uh, two in the Moselle, one in the Nahe. So those are coming up here in a little bit. Um, I'm also doing, uh, actually those will be the next three shows after today's episode and next week's episode. Um, and then after that, I have another interview with an Italian winemaker from Provine. And then I'll have three days of Provine uh, coverage um, over three weeks. I'm not going to do it all in one week because uh, cocktail conference and, and symposium kind of taught me that if I'm trying to do multiple days in one episode, it's, it's a little difficult to really do it the right way. So, um, uh, to get some housekeeping done real quick, um, uh, well, first of all, I'm doing a, a just regular still wines though. Uh, I, I, um, you may have heard me talk about, I'm trying to get a job and all that. I do have a job, uh, as per usual, I do not discuss where I'm working, um, but I'm no longer in restaurants. So I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but I am still in the wine industry, the beverage industry. So um, I'm also going to talk real quick about the equipment you uh, will see that I'm using um, during the Germany trip. Uh, the first thing I want to really talk about is, where's my phone? So uh, of course my phone is my normal camera. I'm using my, my video camera. I really prefer to use the video camera at home. Uh, this phone takes incredible video, but um, honestly, the, the color and contrast and the exposure, I just can't get it quite right with this, at least here on the set. Um, it comes out perfect every time because I can use, you know, I can use gray cards and white and white balance cards on the video camera because it's, it's meant for video. Whereas this, I can't use those cards. Come on, man. If you're taking video, I mean, everybody else uses it. Anyway. Um, but uh, what I've got here, I've got a, a new case and uh, you're gonna see some video and pictures taken using uh, a new toy I got uh, from Moment. And just so you know, all, this, all these little pieces of equipment that I'm, I'm talking about, I'm not being like compensated in any way. I paid for all this stuff. But um, anyway, so I've got this uh, cool little gizmo here. Uh, it's a, their Moment's wide lens. Moment is one of the, I would say the top two lens makers out there. Uh, they're, I mean, of course they say they have the best glass. Uh, there's like another one that says that does really well. You don't use those clip-ons. They, they suck. Anyway, the thing about moment, um, is that you can twist it on and off. Um, that's with the case. And then with the iPhone and the Google pixel, I think it's the Google pixel, but the Google phones, at least the current ones, not the ones that have the crazy, like 5 billion cameras on them. Um, with these cases, depending on which which part you put it on, you can be using the tele telephoto lens or the wide angle lens. This is the wide angle uh, lens itself. So if you use telephoto, you're getting a wide angle telephoto, which is kind of cool. And if you put on the regular wide angle lens and you're getting an even wider field of view, purpose of that, um, not take incredible pictures, but the video, um, because video on, on mobile devices crops a little bit, um, I'm getting more of a full frame. Plus it's a little bit wider angle. I'm hoping to get a little bit more um, dramatic vistas. Uh, so I'll be using this uh, for some video in the vineyards while I'm in um, Germany. And then also I'll probably be, well, using this and 
my other new toy, which I got to get the case. Um, well, I'll talk about this new toy in a second. Uh, the other thing I've got for, for this lens is uh, I didn't bring down the, um, oh, where's the, I got a whole bunch of stuff here. I didn't bring down the, the adapter, but there's an adapter you put onto the lens and then it allows you to put a filter any type of filter on. Uh, I've got myself a variable density filter. Um, I have a feeling I'm not really gonna need it in Germany uh, because as of right now, today is, well, this, yeah, it's still the, no Siri, I don't wanna talk to you. It's 7th of, of March and I leave in, I'll be in Germany the 14th of March and driving to the Mosul for my first appointment. <clears throat> the weather forecast right now shows that it's gonna be like rainy. If you all heard, you've all heard about my superpower, it doesn't rain on me, it's gonna go, it, this is gonna get really tested. Uh, I think I'm gonna get rained on. Um, like every day so far, like Thursday, Friday into Saturday from what I can see forecast wise, um, it looks like it's a pretty good chance of rain. The good thing is apparently I won't get any snow. It looks like I was having a little bit of snow that very, the second day when I drive to the Nahe uh, for my appointment over there. Anyway, so I'm excited about uh, the new lens. I played around with it the other day, a couple weeks ago, just to take pictures and some video. It looked really good. Um, so yeah, I haven't done like extensive testing. Uh, the other thing I got for the phone is I got Apple's um, battery case. Now I got Moments battery case because it also has you know the connector for all that. And a couple things about the about even this battery case is that it doesn't work with gimbals. So you may have seen me talk about my Osmo 2, um, which I love when it like doesn't go, hey man, we're, we're, we're taking video and goes Pfft. I think I've got that figured out, but it's still just, it does, sometimes the pairing goes off. Um, anyway, so the battery case doesn't fit on there, which I failed to read. They say it in there, I got it. I was like, fine, I just won't use the gimbal with it. I'll just use it to keep the phone charged in between using the gimbal and, and like when I've used when I use the phone to actually make regular video, I've got like my, my tripod and everything, which I got a new tripod too, we'll talk about here in a second. Um, but the battery case didn't seem to work. Like it was like messing with the phone. So I sent it back, got a refund. So I got Apple's. This is technically for the brand new iPhone, not for the iPhone 10, but for the 10, uh, the 10 with the 10s and 10s plus whatever it is um but it fits it's the, those two phones this year's phone or two at the 18's phone and 17's phone are effectively identical as far as dimensions there's a slight difference on uh, this opening here but it still fits it perfectly it's just not perfect perfect like apple would do but like if you got a third party case it would it fits fine. So, and it works really well. I've used it. Um, and the best thing about this case versus any of the third market case is that you still get data. <clears throat> so <clears throat> any third market battery case with Apple for the most part, um, ever since battery cases have been made for Apple with lightning ports, um, is that the, it only, it only sends power through. It doesn't send audio and it doesn't send, um, data through but it does with this one, so I can plug it into the car, I can use a car play and all that fun stuff. I love this case. <clears throat> it, and it's not cheap, but it basically blows all the other cases out of the water for functionality. For extra battery time, it's not as much, but you get, you get 50 to 75% more battery, upwards of 100% more battery, depending on how you're using it. <clears throat> love the case, it's really good. All right, um, other new toy. So doing all this traveling and having, hanging around and all that and using this gimbal and you know, I've got this little, I don't know where I put it. I got a little like lanyard right here, got a little lanyard to, to put, the, put the Osmo on and it's just like super heavy and just bulky. And I was at, when I was at the cocktail conference, I saw somebody with the other thing I had thought about getting but was, it's way more expensive than, the, than that gimbal. And this is the Osmo Pocket, uh, Osmo Pocket. And uh, this thing is pretty effing incredible. Like, boom, it's ready to go. And of course, it has me have no SD card in there. But um, I took some, uh, I took some video, um, and uh, it does really well. So I'm super happy about it. And then uh, I got this case from whatever the name of the place is, something Pro. Uh, and then I got some filters, which are in the case, uh, ND filters. Um, to also help with, with some stuff. That's cool. Uh, I got this, this is a car mount. Um, I did initially to use for my digital camera, um, but the digital camera is 
Op uh, image stabilization isn't that great. That's why I got this. It was rock solid in the car. This thing is absolutely rock solid. They make they make a one, a two, which I have it a three. These things are actually designed to sit outside of your car, but I'm not, uh-uh. Well, and besides the, the pocket, that gimbal at, you know, 30, 40 miles an hour, it's probably gonna go, pfft. the camera, you know, it's not gonna stay steady. Anyway, this thing's awesome. Um, Oh, this bag was with something that's put on, my, put on my lavaliers in here now, so I have a place for the lavaliers, so I'm not just flying around my backpack. And then I got another tripod, a portable tripod. I don't really know why, but I kind of did. I know why, honestly, because I needed something that I could stand in front of. Because when I was at St. Trifon, um, the, the portable um, tripod I have just isn't, doesn't go tall enough. But then again, when you, I, I, I got this whole package of extra stuff for the pocket and it comes with a, a selfie stick and you put, you, put, you put the selfie stick on my other tripod and then the actual thing is like, this is a, a case that comes with it. And it actually is tall enough, but I bought this. Um, it's, it, 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 uh, here's your feet and here's this. It expands, it's also a selfie stick, yada, yada, yada. Um, it wasn't terribly expensive. It fits in my backpack, but not as, it's not as compact as my other one. The other one lays down in the backpack. This one I have to put in straight up, but it completely fits. So that's why I got it. Now I actually can run two cameras. So I can use the pocket and the phone. I don't know if I'm gonna do that on this trip, but I'm probably gonna play around with that and maybe have two camera interviews where I can like have a camera focused on my subject, uh, if it's just like one person, or if it's a couple people have it just focus on them and then have like a wider shot. That's the idea. Uh, but that pocket is gonna use that in the trade show all over the place and I'm, I'm gonna use it for walking around vineyards. It mean, it's easier than the gimbal. The gimbal will be great for the phone when I wanna use like take some awesome video with some great wide angle. Um, so, you know, the different, different tools for different things. Um, I think that's, oh, and then, uh, yeah, I don't even talk about that. And then uh, to the thing I've, I, I kind of discovered at cocktail conference, or I kind of knew, but I didn't do anything with it, is I really need a vest to carry all my junk, okay? Lots of pockets, like I literally have every pocket is assigned, it's like 16 pockets. I think I have like one extra pocket, but the coolest thing about this vest, I'll have links to all this stuff below. You know, below. Um, there's a huge back pocket. I literally can put my laptop in if I want to, but I can use it for my iPad. I can use it for um, the tripods. That's why I was looking for some place I could carry the tripods while carrying my hand. Uh, you got these front pockets, I mean, I, it's great. It's I probably should got the little bit bigger version. I got the extra large because I wear extra large and it doesn't completely close, but that's okay. It's basically a hunter's jacket and or photographer uh, vest or photographer's vest. My buddy, uh, Jeremy uh, at Ruination Press, uh, when I saw him at the um, uh, cocktail conference, he had one of those and I didn't really ask him about it, but it put the idea in my head that I probably should get that because I had my Texom satchel and while it carries everything, it's like, it's like a woman's purse. Where is everything? Because there's a lot of stuff in there. All right. So I think that's everything. Uh, yeah. Anyway, super excited about this trip. And uh, it's going to be a little bit different uh, type of shows when I do the recap. Somewhat kind of like the cocktail conference, where it's not going to be just one, just me sitting in front of the camera talking. It's going to be a lot of little quick things. Um, we'll see how it goes. They'll probably might they're just like cocktail conference. Some stuff didn't make it because it was just too long, or I cut stuff out. So I'm super excited about that. All right, so let's um, hmm. let's get into wine, and uh, that brings me to the Corvin. So you guys have heard me complain over the past few months that I keep getting a leak out of this thing. So I finally, after complaining, finally contacted Corvin and they said that with this model, which is the original version of the model, I mean, I didn't buy it right when it came out, but I bought it shortly afterwards, but this is the original model and they have other models now that they redesigned the thing that holds the actual capsule and that also uh, the threads can get dirty from wine. Well, so they said, we're gonna send you a new new one of these, not gonna send me a new unit. Uh, they sent me some capsules, because I said, hey, I'm getting all these leaks. And they said, you should clean the threads on the unit. 
So I wiped them down and there was no residue on there. So I don't think it was that. Um, anyway, so I was using it over the past few weeks and I'm pretty sure it's still not working right. I have, uh, I've only, I don't remember how many glasses I got, <clears throat> but it did leak on me again. So I have three glasses in right now. I don't know if it's a matter of like, if you don't use it a lot, it's loses its, it loses its, um, uh, grip. But I mean, this is as tight as you can get because when it was leaking, I tried to tighten it and I was able to tighten it. So I, maybe it just loses its, I don't know, grip. Maybe that's what's going on. Don't know. We're going to try it out a little bit more. And if I keep having issues with it, I'll contact them again, see what we can do. But if I have to buy another one, I will. I don't really want to do that, but that would be your cue to send money if I have to, or you just send money anyway, the PayPal donation. All right. So <clears throat> let's get into this wine. So, um, uh, yeah, let's get into the wine. So this wine, uh, I bought from underground cellar. This is the domain St. Marie, um, VA Vitae, uh, 2017 Rosé, uh, from, uh, the Côte, Côte de Provence, uh, AOP, cause now they're AOPs, not AOCs anymore. Uh, it's actually a 13% alcohol on that. And I paid $25 on, uh, underground seller. I probably should look up what the actual value is, but this may have actually been the, um, the entry level price point. Um, but I think that's right about the right price point anyway. I didn't see it on their website as far as price points because they're from France. Um, so a little bit about the domain. Oh, here's my glass. Well, where's my glass? Um, so it doesn't exactly say when they were founded. It says it dates back to the 18th century. And it just says uh, they belong to the Monastère de la Verne, uh, located a little higher than the Massif de Mores. Um, and in 1884, which they have a wine named 18, you know, rosé named 1884, uh, there was a cholera ec epidemic, uh, and it falls in the region where it actually stops on our field. Uh, the inhabitants of the ha hamlet decide to build a statue of the Virgin Mary to thank her, and they say, uh, "Today, the, the the surrounded by vineyards, uh, olive trees, and oaks, the statue of the Virgin leaves almost uh, affectionately." His benevolence, I think they mean his as in God, because the Virgin Mary is a her, um, on the estate, blah, blah, blah. In 2007, the uh, Dubre Duberk, it's one of those things where it ends in CQ, so I don't know exactly how it's pronounced, but D-U-B-U-R-C-Q. I probably should have Google tell me how to do that. Oh, no leaking so far. Uh, they, they acquired it in 2007. This family acquired it. So there we go. Anyway, um, they have 40 hectares. Uh, it says exposed south. The soil consists of a sandy uh, and impermeable soil, uh, largely composed of schists, uh, mica schists, and white quartz. Uh, the slopes are quite soft. Uh, how, they have a hot, dry climate in the summer. Nights are cool in the summer and winter. Uh, they have vegetal cover uh, in the um, vineyards as long as possible, and its maintenance is provided primarily by the passage of sheep. Vines are grouped in the middle of a great forest made of cork oaks, cork oaks, pines, arbutus, heather, and they just kind of trail off. So I get so much of stuff. <clears throat> um, they say their property is certified. They call it high environmental value level three. They say is the highest. I don't know exactly what that means, um, but I'm assuming that it's more like they're certified organic or some type of sustainability. Um, they have 12 varieties grown. I won't go through all of those, but the average vine age is 35 years old. Uh, they say the wines are organic and vegan, um, which if you didn't know that there's actually a lot of wines that are not vegan because of the, because of whatever they use for fining, which is the, which is the material they use to kind of take out some solids to get the wine clear. Um, because we're used to stuff that's clear. If it doesn't look clear, we think it's bad. Um, so there are some animal products that are, can be used to find, uh, to do that fining. Um, and, uh, if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, I guess, yeah, more, well, yeah, I guess vegetarian, uh, also depending on what they're using, you may or may not be, you know, drinking wine that aligns with how you 
like to you know consume products. The only way for you to know that is if they the, you go to their website or it's on the bottom it says it, or you have to contact the winery and be like, hey, is your stuff vegan, vegetarian friendly, whatever. It's just so you know. Um, let's see here. Uh, what else can we talk about with that? Let's just go to the fact sheet <clears throat> for the wine. Now, um, here we go. The fact sheet that I got is actually for the 2015 vintage. I don't know why they don't keep stuff updated. Uh, in this, it says the varieties are Cinso, Grenache, Syrah, and Carignan. Uh, it's 30% each Cinso, Grenache, Syrah, and then 10% Carignan. I don't know if that changes from year to year. Um, let's see here. They said the domain is located 21 kilometers south of, south, sorry, 21 kilometers west of Saint Tropez. Um, we've already talked about that and we will ignore the tasting notes. It said that it's all estate grown grapes. All right. So let's check it out. Um, traditional rosé color, somewhat of a salmon, almost, almost a touch of orange, but I know I've got red, I've got red going on here, but I mean, even looking at, you know, everything's color coordinated on the website. It's kind of like a pink salmon ish, almost reddish orange type of color. Uh, let's get on the nose. One thing I've vowed to try to do because my, my master sommelier Craig Collins told me when I did my tasting with him uh, last month, or actually two months ago now, um, that you know I swirl my wine way too much when I'm doing tasting. And I was like, yeah, guess what I do in the podcast? I swirl the wine like, like a nervous tick. And I've talked about that before. So I'm trying to swirl so much. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but like the first thing you do is don't swirl it. And you're kind of losing a lot of the aromatics immediately because the esters are a little delicate. Swirling helps, but you need to like not swirl occasionally. So there's um, a candied strawberry. Yeah, a little bit candy strawberry. Uh, some green apple, some apple blossom. Uh, kind of a, a sour apple almost somewhat candied on the nose. I know it's not sweet wine. A uh, touch of um, linen, you know, like, like wool, not, not wet wool, like very wet wool, but like just linen, like fresh, clean linen, cotton. And uh, kind of a peach skin quality. Very pleasant, very delicate, very light on the nose. It's not really overpowering. The fruit smells fairly ripe, not like super ripe, but just like just ripe. Maybe it's slightly underripe, but like just exactly ripe. It smells nice. Let's taste it. It's very pleasant, very French. Um, on the palate, um, a lot of what I talked about is still there. The fruit's slightly tart. Um, it's not like a full, full on ripe strawberry, candied green apple. Uh, that's all there. Um, it feels a little hot that I feel like the alcohol, you know, is kind of not quite in balance. It's very tasty though. Um, It's got a decent amount of acidity to it. Um, <clears throat> now the alcohol might be just my first taste, might be feel like a little high, but I still feel like a little bit of burn in my in my <clears throat> in my chest, you know, when I'm breathing. So it's 13%. It's not like terrible, but um, it feels like it's a little bit hotter than 13%. Um, but it's very it's very crisp. It's very it's a little bit tart. Um, it's also a little bit. We like to call it phenolic bitterness. It's the tannins from, from the grapes. Um, even though uh, there's no um, white grapes in here, it's, you know, white, when white wines, we tend to talk about this phenolic bitterness instead of calling it tannin. That just means that maybe had some, guess what just happened? Oh, it stopped. I'm sure it's gonna do it on the next wine, so I'm just gonna, you know, deal with it off camera. Anyway, um, Anyway, so though, 
sometimes white wines you get a little bit extra skin contact you get maybe a little color a little extraction a little bit of you know just flavor and all that kind of stuff so but it's just a slightly tannic so i feel like there might be a little bit of skin contact on this but it's very pleasant i mean it's 25 dollars, absolutely it's it's definitely worth it i think it, it definitely tastes better than your 10 dollar, you know rosé Yeah, you know, you want to have like a kind of like a light fare with this, like maybe some some nice fruits, uh, maybe some. Um, I would probably pair it with some softer cheeses. Um, you could have some lighter meats, like some duck or something like that, with it. Not like like you know heavy salamis or anything like that. Maybe a little bit of duck or whatever, uh, even some chicken, um, you know, pork, that kind of stuff. Um, maybe a touch of barbecue sauce. Really nice wine. I like it a lot. Anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, as always, you can click the links above to friend me up. Um, also, if you're watching on YouTube or you're watching on the website, you click the subscribe button. Let's try to get some more subscribers here. If you're listening to iTunes or you find me on iTunes or Podbean, Podbeam, Bean, not Beam, that'd be like a laser beam, uh, Podbean, you know, click subscribe there. Those are the two places on the podcast side of things, plus any other pod catcher that plays video. So I'm not on Spotify or anything, or Google. I think, don't think Google Play has video yet. Um, I thought they did, but I, it seems like they don't have it yet. But any of those pod catchers that do video, you can catch me on there. It's just, you know, look, go to iTunes or look for the RSS feed on the website. Um, I've started putting the full description in Podbean and um, YouTube. So with the actual links there on YouTube, you can click the links. So I'm trying to do that just so, because I think a lot of times, you know, people aren't actually going to the website necessarily because there's one extra step. So I'm trying to make it easier for you to get the information that's going on there. Um, so you click the links below for that. Let's say you hit the donate button over there and kind of, yeah, down there to uh, uh, send a few ducats uh, that helps pay for things like when I buy a new Corvin, which is probably where it have to happen, or when I take trips to Germany or anywhere else, because um, I have no sponsors officially, other than Underground Cellar, which is where I bought this. Uh, if you go to Underground Cellar, there'll be a link below, um, and you use the code 1337WINE, I get a $25 credit that I can use towards buying more wine. So if you uh, sign up with them, use my referral code, that gives me a little bit extra cash to spend on their website. All right, that's going to do it for now. And uh, thank you for stopping by, and we'll see everyone again next time.